you guys build this brand. And there's somebody out there who's trying to build their own brand, whether it is they're, they're in a service oriented business or a product business. When do you know that you can charge? You know, sometimes you, I mean, you guys are entrepreneurs just like myself. Sometimes you got to give the product away for free to get people to come back and know. But y'all jumped out the window and started apparel. You, you were doing these live events, uh, the university. When did you say to yourself, you know what? People would actually pay for this. I know we are not uh, uh, this global brand yet, but people will actually pay. And I think that that's an area that a many entrepreneurs suffer from is they don't know what their value is. And when they can go and say, you know what, I've been giving my services or these products away for free long enough. Now I can charge. Was there a moment that you guys said to yourself, people will pay for these services and, and we have properly set ourselves up to sell it? Um, I think one of the first things we did was uh, we had like a, a little a site, Patreon, for the people that were like super supporters, like a proud to pay program. And so when we showed them what we were going to be offering in that um, avenue and people were supporting it, it was like, all right, well, people will pay $2 and $5 for these things and they'll pay $25 to speak to you and get the episodes ad free and get some merch releases. And I was like, all right, well, we got something there. Um, but the, everything we had done was free. We was giving it out for free. Like the podcast was free. Even the, the live events, it was free of charge. Like all they had to do was just sign up and show up and, and meet us. And when we were what we were doing was kind of crazy. We were bringing the episodes with us. And so when we went to Brooklyn, if there was some the New York people that was on the podcast, they showed up to the Brooklyn event. When we went to uh, Chicago, when we went to Houston, if anybody was from Houston that we interviewed, they showed up. And so now the people are seeing live episodes. So that was all free. Um, but I think the Patreon was the first thing. Um, and then the merch was like, all right, well, people will support that. Um, and then later on, we were like, all right, Maybe it's time to, to, to try something in a live event space. Got you. So, so when you first started these live events, those were actually free? Yeah, yeah, they were free. Um, and how we the, we monetized them were we sell merch and we got to split at the bar. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really the goal was just to kind of... Very like small. You, said, you know, like... <laughs> if it's going to be a dud or not. So before we actually charge people for the live events, we like, all right, let's just see if we can do free events first. And then once we did like, you know, five free events, um, then we doubled back and then we did um, a paid, paid events after that. So, you know, I, to answer your question before of like, when do you know in charge? Sometimes you just got to test, test the waters. That was our testing the water for the, for the events at least was um, through pay, through, free events first to make sure that we had some level of support. And then once we saw like all right, hundreds of people are coming, we definitely, you know, we have enough support where we can start charging for different things. So that was one of the thermometer checks. Gotcha. 2020 outside looking in, it seems like where this whole world has been, you know, going through, so many different changes that, that has never been before seen in the history of this planet. It seems as though Earn Your Leisure is thriving. One of the things that you guys introduced, and I believe it was um, 2020 at the start of the pandemic, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is Market Mondays. What made you guys decide to focus specifically on the market with um, your co-host Ian Dunlap and why do you think it worked then? Because you took a real chance during the pandemic. Yeah, shout out to um, Wall Street Trapper, our bro. He says something that always stuck with me. You know, he uses a lot of street references. Um, and he was like, you always make more money in the drought. And uh, it's true. And I feel like, especially in our space, the financial literacy space is something that boomed when Corona took hold and it's like, you know, it's interesting, there's opportunities in every crisis. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of brick and mortar businesses got hit hard. Uh, but the online space actually 
had an uptick in everything from online, from Netflix to anything online had an uptick, especially financial content. Cause it's like, you know, we're in a recession and people need to, you know, take their finances more serious now. Like it's like, all right, whenever, whenever things go down, uh, financial industry goes up. Mm -hmm. So it was actually good time. And then when the stock market crashed, it was interesting because, you know, you would think that would be a bad time to start a stock show, but it was actually a great time because now that's when people, their interest in the stock market hit an all time high because they realized, you know, it's an opportunity to make some money. So even like CNBC, there was like their content consumed like 300% increase during, during the pandemic. So when the stock market crashed, everybody starts talking about stocks. So it was like, for us, it's like, all right, this is actually a great time because everybody's talking about stocks, but especially in our community, nobody's educated on stocks. They don't, they don't know enough to actually make any money. They hear, they're hearing it's a good time to invest, but that's it. They don't, they don't know the steps to actually invest. So when we started, that was the beginning of what we have now, EYO Network. And uh, you know, I put a post on Instagram saying we want to help other people produce podcasts. Da, 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 da. We had just did Ian's episode. That was crazy. <laughs> and he um he brought in the comments like, you know, I'm, I'm interested. I want to do a show. So he spoke and uh, kind of came up with the format of Market Mondays, which is a live stock show on YouTube. It's a podcast too, and um, people call in and they they get their questions answered. So it was a, just a you know one of those things. Once again, we didn't really know how successful it would be. We just thought, you know, why not? We got some momentum off of this episode. Stock market is, is hot. Let's let's do a stock show. And that took off and that became extremely successful on its own. It actually rivaled Earn Your Leisure. A lot of people watch Market Mondays and they just addicted to Market Mondays. So that's an old culture, subculture within itself that we've been able to build with this with the uh, investors and, and people are interested in becoming stock market investors. So yeah. It's changed, yeah. it's changed the conversation for our community, man. It, it's, it's crazy. Like, we, even amongst us, like, we have a group of friends, and, like, I'm telling you, like, we would talk about rap, we would talk about music, we would talk about basketball, sports, and all the people want to talk about now is investing. And it's so crazy to see, like, like I said, we didn't have any role models in the space. We were just like, yo, let's just do it. We know something about it. We just put out an episode that went crazy, and the... the the way that people just caught wind of it, it, it's just been phenomenal. And so now it's like people actually gravitate more because it's like they actually, this real things that they can apply, right? When they start to see in a recession, in a pandemic that they can earn some money. Now it's like, wait, I got to tune in every week because I might miss something that can actually put money into my pocket, especially, you know, when unemployment's at an all time high and my job security isn't the same this is an outlet that can save me or help me and my family, not now, but even for generations to come. So yeah, man, it was, the timing of it couldn't have been better. What's up guys. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share peace and love.